Welcome back to the Al Rasta channel. In this video discussion, I'll talk about the 239th episode. But as usual, we'll also go over a bit of the previous episode so that both this discussion and the last one make more sense. Here, Tang Sen beat two Spirit Empire elders at the same time. At the last second of the fight, Tang Sen attacked Zhang Long and Xin Jun with the secret weapon storm Pear Blossom Needle. And because of that, they couldn't fight anymore. But it was really too bad that when Tang San tried to kill one of the two of them, a very strong backup showed up out of nowhere. The one where they were the Second Spirit Empire Priest, or Golden Crocodile Dolu, as they were called by their nickname. Tang San could have died from the blow, and it was certain that he could no longer fight. In his last few seconds, Tang San finally gave up. But all of a sudden, the reinforcements he had been waiting for came, his father Tang San, whose name was Tang Hao, and the followers of the Haokian sect. So, how does the way the 239th episode is described go? We just jump right into the main point of the conversation. For the purpose of protecting Emperor Xue Bang, the war started when Dugubo fought against the fifth cultist, whose name was Guan Ling. This time, Dugubo made a pretty good offer to Guan Ling so he could try the power of his Medusa Snake Queen Spirit Bone technique. You could say that the Medusa Snake technique was the strongest technique Dugubo had at the moment. Even though it had turned some of the arrows that Guan Ling shot into stone. But there were a few of Guan Ling's attacks that got past Dugubo's technique. Because this fifth cultist's attacks were also very fast and too many, they were able to stop the power of Dugubo's Medusa Gaze. <laughs> Dugubo was so overwhelmed by how he felt that his strength could be held back that much. Then it is certain that Guan Ling will win the better position. After putting Dugubo under control, Guan Ling moved quickly because he could also feel the Hao Tian sect coming. Guan Ling was sure that the arrival of this sect would make a big difference on the battlefield. Or more accurately, inside the gate. So, he used his fifth spirit technique right away and went after the great lord of the Tiandu Empire, or Emperor Xue Bang. By killing him, the spirit of war can no longer be controlled. With such a quick attack, it was able to get to Master Xiao Zhang's heart. Unexpectedly, Emperor Xue Bang realized that he couldn't fight without help. But suddenly? Finally, Guan Ling's attack was stopped by the disciples of the Hao Tian sect, led by Tang Xiao, who were able to easily destroy Master Guan Ling's fifth spirit technique. Then he took out Hao Tian's formation, which shocked him. It turned out to be true in the explanation of the novel. If Tang Hao and Tang Xiao divided up their jobs at the Jian Ling Fortress, one of them went straight into the fort, and the other stood guard outside the fort. On the other hand, it is thought that Master Xiao Zhang, who had been hit by an ice arrow, would not just die because Dugu Bo was with him. Here, Dugu Bo gave Master Xiao Zhang first aid by injecting his own blood into his body. So that the freezing technique that goes into the heart doesn't affect a lot of other organs. On the other hand, Guan Ling's fight against Tang Xiao and the disciple of the Hao Tian sect finally goes on. Guan Ling still had the same habit of thinking that any battle he was in was just a game. Even he was brave enough to break through the formation that Hao Tian sect members had set up. On the other hand, Ching Luan Dolua, who was still fighting with Chen Xin, knew that it would be very dangerous for Guan Ling if she broke through the Hao Tian formation led by Tang Xiao. But it looked like Guan Ling didn't pay attention to Cheng Luan's warning, and Guan Ling was finally determined to break through. Oh, 
get paid you are you back? After the battle outside the fortress, we move on to the part of the fight we've been waiting for. Tang Hao vs. the Golden Crocodile Dildawa. At first, Tang Hao didn't attack because he was still asking Golden Crocodile Dildawa in a casual way, was it really him who hurt his son? Dildawa, the Golden Crocodile, also confirmed it, and he asked, what can you do? Even though it was a surprise, the Golden Crocodile, who was so proud of its mouth, insulted the Haotian sect by calling it a cowardly sect that had been hiding for a long time and would suddenly show its face again. Even at this important time, he bragged about being the most important person in the spirit empire. Even the great-grandfather of the Hao Tian sect, whose name was Tang Chen, had to call him senior when they met. Golden Crocodile's words were full of disdain. He was arrogant and told Tang Hao to say his name because he wouldn't kill someone without knowing his name. Hearing the insults, Tang Hao also said something harsh to him. That determination is an important part of living. Crocodile Gold's words hurt him because Crocodile Gold's bad mouth didn't deserve to bring up his grandfather's great name. As the redness got worse, Golden Crocodile Dildawa didn't think any further and took out his spirit ring. And he wanted to see how strong the person in front of him was. Because he never left the Spirit Empire Palace for 50 years, and today he wanted to see how great Junior was this time. <laughs> Here, Tang Hao saw that he always talked too much, so he couldn't help but laugh. He also quickly took out his 100,000 year spirit ring, which showed that both Tang Hao and the second spirit empire priest had the same level of spirit ring. All of the Tang sect elders behind him were shocked to the point that they couldn't keep their faces from showing it. Maybe they thought and knew that if a soul master had the same ring for a hundred thousand years, the battle would be very intense. Then, Tang Hao moved forward slowly and told his son to pay close attention to how strong the Hao Tian sect really was. This time, Tang Hao used a technique that was very different from what he was good at before. This time, instead of using his full spirit ring, he broke it. Don't get me wrong, though. That was the real skill that Tang Hao had never shown before. The spirit ring sacrifice technique would make his attacks do more damage, while at the same time being able to give each hand, leg, and shoulder a bigger dose of hammer energy, up to the speed of its movement. Just one swing of Tang Hao's hammer was enough to send the giant crocodile's tail flying backwards. And even made the golden crocodile shake as it endured to it. When Tang San saw his father make his first move, he was shocked. He could tell that the aura of the hammer that was released this time was extremely sharp, and its power was huge. Tang Hao moved slowly forward again for his next attack, but the golden crocodile Dildawa did not stay quiet. He used his seventh spirit technique right away, which was his guardian spirit of a giant crocodile. This time, the golden crocodile Dolua's attack was very hard to deal with because it could hit deep into the ground. Tang Hao was trapped in his mouth for a long time, and he was even able to keep Tang Hao there. But for Tang Hao, it wasn't fatal because with one swing of the hammer, he was able to break part of the crocodile's fangs and get out of such a tense situation. The battle arena opened up and they started attacking each other.
golden crocodile Doluo let out his crocodile guardian spirit form, and then it was Tang Hao's turn. His hammer avatar, or Hao Tian's hammer armor form, was better this time than the first time he used it to save Tang San after winning the tournament and being surrounded by Wuhan Hall troops. It was a move that could hit the golden crocodile's head so hard that it didn't have time to move. He then used the Sumeru Hammer, a special technique that only Tang Hao and Tang Chen have. We know that the giant crocodile spirit that belongs to the second spirit empire priest is quite big. But Tang Hao's avatar form is even bigger. Also, the blow was able to dent it. And the golden crocodile didn't expect that Tang Hao's hammer power would be much stronger than the hammer techniques he had seen for generations in the Hao Tian sect. To our surprise, the golden crocodile Dolua had never heard of the Sumeru hammer technique. If that's the case, we can say that the Second Spirit Empire Priest doesn't have much combat experience. The Sumeru Hammer Technique was a very secret and powerful hammer technique of the Hao Tian sect. It was so powerful that it could only be passed down from Tang Chen's generation to the next generation in Tang Hao by one person. Even Tang Chen's son, Tang Xiao, didn't learn this technique because only selected candidates were taught it. How could this golden crocodile say that he was a senior in the spirit empire? But he doesn't know about Sumeru's hammer's power in secret, which I think is really embarrassing. So, that's how the review or talk about the 239th episode went. We'll talk about more interesting things from episode 240 in the next video. Friends, thank you for staying until the end, and as always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Goodbye for now, and I'll see you at my video next time.